Hi there, this is Dr. Jason Kahn. Uh, today I'm going to be speaking about cervical resorption, uh, following up on my recent blog post uh, reviewing Shannon Patel's uh, article on the subject. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple of cases that uh, I've managed recently, uh, just to sort of talk about the uh, strategies that we're using uh, to, uh, to tackle these cases. Uh, first case I want to talk about is uh, patient ML. Uh, Middle-aged man, uh, no significant medical history, uh, and like many of these cases, he presented to his dentist uh, uh, for regular uh, checkup and cleaning, and uh, noticed something on the uh, radiographs that uh, thought we should have a look at. Uh, for, other than that, he is totally asymptomatic. Uh, intraoral exam, uh, it was non-significant. Uh, he has normal response to cold, normal mobility, normal probing, and that's uh, that's actually an important fact. Um, but no symptoms to, uh, to percussion, palpation, or to bite. Uh, and in fact, the uh, the gingiva all around these teeth uh, all appears normal. Uh, radiographically, we can certainly see that there is something going on on the uh, what appears to be the mesial aspect of this tooth, uh, number three five. Um, in the coronal and middle third. Uh, and traditionally, we're taught to take uh, off-angle radiographs, uh, as we've done here, uh, to try, help us try and discern if it's an internal versus external uh, resorption. Uh, in this case, it doesn't appear that the lesion moves uh, with our off-angle, uh, and so one might conclude that it's uh, an internal resorption. Uh, as in uh, Shannon Patel's uh, article, uh, with modern-day CT machines, we can uh, have a much better look at uh, exactly what's going on. Uh, so starting off with our transverse view, uh, as we move down, we can see the pulp uh, start to appear. And our lesion initially looks like it's an internal resorption, uh, but in fact, it does look like it is uh, perforating in the cervix. Uh, another reason, the discerning eye will note that the pulp does appear darker, and we'll also see an area of the predentin protein surrounding uh, the uh, the pulp chamber. Um, that lets us know that this is in fact a cervical resorption uh, and would also uh, be a reason why he is asymptomatic uh, in terms of uh, pulpal testing. And we notice that uh, our ligament does appear intact uh, coronally, which is why we don't have any probing. That's going to be important for how we address this uh, you know, in looking for our strategies and how we're going to tackle it. Going to our sagittal view, uh, it doesn't really show us too much uh, other than what we can see radiographically. Uh, we can note that the, uh, the mental nerve is in close approximation to the uh, apex of this tooth and that there is a strong curvature in that apical third as well. Something to note if we're going to attempt this endodontically. And then this coronal view really uh, gives us a good indication of whether we're going to try and tackle this surgically versus non-surgically. So we can see that although it's a thin shelf, uh, that crest of bone is intact uh, at the area where uh, it is perforating, and it's not communicating with the sulcus at all. So in terms of our diagnosis, uh, we do have cervical resorption uh, with a normal pulp and normal apical tissues. Um, there are instances where people choose to observe these cases, uh, and there's mounting evidence that uh, this should not be the approach we've taken. Uh, these do not move in a linear fashion uh, in terms of their progression, so we can tend to observe these for a long time thinking that we're safe, uh, and then in a quick six-month recall, this will quickly go from a class one to a class three, uh, and then the only option that we have is, is extraction. Um, so really it comes down to surgical versus uh, internal repair. In this particular case, we can see that the lesion is in close approximation with the pulp. Uh, and so even if we were to try to approach this uh, from a surgical standpoint, uh, we would likely end up uh, iatrogenically exposing the pulp uh, and needing to do non-surgical endodontic therapy uh, anyway. Um, the other disadvantage to approaching this surgically would be because that crest of bone is intact, if we uh, destroy that from a surgical standpoint, uh, we'll end up with a localized periodontal issue. Uh, and so if possible, doing an internal repair without disturbing that coronal uh, bone uh, will be the best uh, way of managing this case. Um, so for methodology, 
uh, the approach that I chose was to, to go at this non-surgically, uh, to remove the lesion uh, internally uh, and, and obviously very carefully. Um, use of a microscope is going to be uh, incredibly important in these cases, so we remove, make sure that we're removing lesion and not bone, and the two can look very, very similar, especially when the, uh, the tissues are bleeding. Um, in terms of materials, uh, there's a couple of ways we can go with this. One would be to use the traditional MTA, and that's really a gold standard for maintaining uh, bone uh, or placing a material in, uh, in a biologic width zone. Um, but the disadvantage is that it requires uh, time to set. Um, and in cases of, uh, of resorption, uh, especially if there is uh, still some bleeding bone, uh, it may not uh, it may not be possible to, to have this material set if we don't achieve hemostasis, um, and that's where one of the newer materials in terms of uh, bioceramic uh, comes into play. Um, it's got results that appear to be very similar to MTA. Um, it does take less time to set, and it's a little bit more pliable. Um, the other advantage is that we might be able to uh, to achieve uh, a completion of this case in one visit, which is always advantageous for the patient. And so that's the uh, the material we chose. We were able to uh, to go in, um, place bioceramic uh, after removing the lesion, uh, and use that as sort of an interim um, uh, material while we completed endodontic therapy. Uh, and then I ended up removing the bioceramic, uh, really to place a fresh uh, uh, perforation repair in that area. Uh, having the patient back at a three-month visit, uh, the uh, the tissues all appear normal, which is uh, fantastic. It appears that we've maintained the biologic width. Uh, patient is symptom-free, uh, and there's no probing in the area as well. So this is definitely a, a very successful case, uh, managed well. Uh, if you have any questions about this case or any other, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for watching.